Welcome to Saturday's video, Plumbing with Tim. So glad you could join me. Stick around and we're gonna get the show started right now. So in the past there's been some uh, discussion and you know, some differences of opinions when it comes to working on old Delta shower valve. Yeah, one of these old babies. Everybody out here in the viewing audience, including you plumbers out there, no, when you run across one of these types of old Delta shower tub valves and trying to replace parts in here is nearly impossible to get this ring off of there due to corrosion and calcium buildup. So chances are usually you end up just going ahead and pulling it out and putting a new one in. Good look at this. I pulled it out of a customer's house earlier this week. This is the front of the valve as you would see it. What's wrong with this picture? It's all crooked. Yeah. The homeowner decided to try to take and turn this and when he did that he twisted the little copper pipes that are back in here see them we talked about this in another video and he snapped it next thing he knew he had a leak and he was calling me i'm not here to chastise that homeowner for at least trying to do something because i've done it myself i only did it one time that's all it took Mine was on the third floor of a condo building and it snapped on me behind the wall and flooded out the condo down below and I got in some real big trouble. That's why I know better. Okay, so after I messed up years ago on one of these valves, uh, every time after that, I was very apprehensive and approached these valves with extreme caution. Uh, I'd always take some sort of a lubrication and spray it around that nut and walk away and let it sit for a while and hope to God that that thing would loosen up and break the catalyst inside of there for me to put a wrench and get that nut out so I could get the parts inside out and replace them. Using lube on these, <laughs> I'll tell you, it may end up working if you're lucky, but that's gonna take a lot of time, all right? And nobody's got all day and all night. If you're a homeowner and that's you've got the, the leisure of time to try to let it loosen itself up uh, by using a lubricant and stuff like that, cool. But when you're on the job and you're a service plumber, time is money. Get to this point usually as a plumber, what do you end up doing? explain it to the customer it's time that old valve comes out and we put a new one in now you're talking at least four hundred dollars instead of a regular hundred and fifty dollar service call in parts I've had to do it a ton of times and I still have to do it even to this day but recently I had in my mind for quite a while but I was never had the nerve to try it I found a new method of getting the ring off of the valve right here this ring without snapping it and be able to get in there and replace the parts and cut the cost of having to replace that valve by a third. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do if you're going to try to do this, and it will work if you listen to me, is you got to make sure that you have replacement parts that are going to go back in here. There's plastic, there's rubber inside of here, okay? So run down, not to Home Depot or Lowe's, to a local plumbing supply store and get your parts Explain to them what kind of valve you have. Take a picture of it. Take it into them. And they're gonna give you a little parts deal similar to this, okay? And I also carry this little plastic Delta replacement parts, as you can see in here. I've got all the little rubber washers and springs and all that other good stuff. Don't ever get involved in trying to get inside of that valve unless you have replacement parts because what's going to end up happening is is if you can get this ring off of here chances are you got to have the water turned back on and if you ruin the parts in there now you've got the water off to the house for who knows how long it takes for you to go down and find replacements parts doing plumbing is like playing chess before you make your first move think about what's coming next so you don't screw yourself Okay, so without saying, before you get involved in anything plumbing related, especially one of these valves, you need to head outside, cut the water off to your house, open up all the valves, drain everything out of the system, even turn this valve on as much as you can. To, you know, this is one of the old style uh, that has the old ball barrel in there with the two rubber, rubber uh, seats and springs inside of there. So all it is is an up and down, all right? And it's a twist back and forth like that. So, get the water off to the house. As soon as you know all the water is extracted out of your system, come back and now check this out. 
real quick before I do start this and show you how to get this ring off of here. As you can see, and I showed you right off in the beginning of the, uh, the video, this valve is already shot. Okay, so I'm going to do the best I can. It's not mounted in the wall like you would find these. Uh, so, you know, applications may differ, but it's all got the same technique when it comes down to it. So, our first step of what we're going to want to have to do, I'm going to drop the camera down here, is get our handy dandy little torch. Yep. You got it. The torch. Check it out. Watch carefully. I'm going to fire the old torch up. There we go. Let's get that thing nice and hot. Take two pairs of channel locks. Check it out. I want to heat that nut up real good. Takes a little while, as you can see, I've melted the inside of that part out pretty good. But look at this. Remember, this thing's like 600 degrees. Don't be an idiot and grab it with your hands. Look at the ring come off. See that? Now, let's say that this was still on the wall. The valve is still good. I haven't broke anything. Now, when it comes to the actual valve itself, I've just burned up the parts inside. Well, they're bad anyways, because that's the whole reason why we had to get in here. See that? Rings off. Now we're going to let that thing cool off for a few minutes. All right, so now that the valve has cooled itself off some, we're going to go ahead and take and try to get that bad stuff. Look at that. We pulled it out. There's those two little rubber washers and springs that are inside of there. There's the ball, the retention clip, all that stuff. They're no good anymore. Water's still off. That's the whole point of telling you to go get your parts of what you need before you start this. Because now that the parts, you know, you still have to extract the, the little two rubber washers and springs out of there. Uh, make sure it's cleaned up good enough and all that stuff. But <laughs> now you just put the new stuff back in there and take your ring and screw it back on there. Snug. And you just saved $300. Hey, listen, if you're not comfortable doing any of this stuff, stop what you're doing and call a licensed plumber. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that plumbers have to do all the time. But most plumbers don't end up getting into doing what I just showed you how to do. Uh, once they feel as though that nut won't move, they usually tell the customer it's time to replace that valve. Not everybody's made the money. So this is another option, and this is how you do it. Hey, just be careful and be safe, and things will work out for you. So there you guys have it. I hope this video has helped you out one way or another. Hey, I've got them all day long. This is not always going to be the most safe way of doing things. So remember, listen, the reason why I'm putting this video out is it's one of those little secrets a lot of plumbers don't want you to know. Because they want to sell you a new valve. Not everybody's got four, five, six hundred dollars to rip that valve out and put a new one in and sometimes have to make wall repairs. So until next time, this has been Plumbing with Tim. Keep plumbing.